on this episode of the Globe Sports Corner. Goshen College Baseball dedicates their Fall World Series to a former coach who brought passion to the game. We sit down with the head coach of the GC Cross Country team following a historic meet, honor seniors set to play their final matches, and check out the Globe Highlight of the Week. All that and more on the Globe Sports Corner. Welcome inside the Globe Studios. My name is Dante Stin, and you're watching the Globe Sports Corner. We look to bring you exclusive coverage of Maple Leaf Athletics. Big week ahead of us. By the end of the show, we'll even be talking about basketball season and how quickly games on the hardwood are headed our way. Got a lot to look forward to, so let's get into it. We'll start by taking a look at the Goshen College men's and women's cross country teams and their impressive performance at the NAIA Great Lakes Challenge. Both GC teams went out and proved themselves to be top contenders at the largest NAIA only cross country event in the country. The women finished second of 22 teams. The men ended up in fourth of 27 squads. The top five runners from both teams set school records with the fastest combined team times. Not only were the Leafs setting team records, but they were also upsetting competition as well. The 25th ranked women's team placed higher than three other ranked Crossroads League schools, and the men notched their first top five performance at the challenge in a decade. Stay with us. We'll sit down with Rustin Nice, head coach of the GC Cross Country Program, later on in the show to chat more about his team's tremendous performance. We'll turn now to an incredibly emotional scene that took place at Sarge Yoder Field just two weeks ago as one of Goshen's baseball's most coveted traditions got a new name. The professional baseball season culminates into one postseason series. Goshen College baseball ends their fall season with a similar high-stakes event, the Maple Leaf World Series. But this World Series is more special than most. The Maple Leaf World Series has been a tradition for the Goshen College baseball team for quite some time now. And I'm proud to announce that this year and for the foreseeable future, this Maple Leaf World Series will dedicate and be an honor to our late assistant coach, Doug Wellenreiter. Many coaches aspire to leave a positive, lasting legacy on the programs they work with. Few reach that level, but Doug Wellenreiter has. Every day he came out to the yard, he was like the hardest working dude there, and he was he was pretty old, you know, and he was one of the guys my freshman year that I talked to a lot. Like he he would sit there and talk your head off, you know, and until you couldn't talk no more. And he, he was just a really great guy and really just an inspiration. Like you can't come out to the to the Sarge and compete and have fun and not think of Doug. Doug Wellenrider was the assistant coach of the Goshen College baseball team from 2015 until his passing in 2020. And myself and the rest of the team were brought to tears. Um, after hearing of his passing. Kelly Wellenreiter, Doug's wife, spoke about just how much baseball meant to Doug, especially the Maple Leaf World Series. This World Series was his favorite, and I, I told Brad, I said, the reason why he loved it so much was because if he won, then all the players on his team got to come to our house and I had to fix a great big meal. And so every year he'd come home and he says, well, I won. He says, so what are we going to fix? And this was one of his favorite parts of the year. I mean, he loved all the travel and stuff in the spring, but because it was among the baseball players themselves, he really loved seeing the kids at their best and playing against each other and really having a good time. For Doug, coaching wasn't just about winning. He always said he wasn't making baseball players, he's making men. He wants to make men out of baseball players. Those that knew and were coached by Doug are continuing his legacy. It's great that we can pass on his legacy because, man, he rubbed off a lot on me, and he's not here to do that for these kids. So now it's up to us to continue his legacy and continue his coaching as far as we get to go. Playing in the Maple Leaf World Series now means something more than bragging rights. It's a way to remember and pass on the lessons that Doug wanted his players to learn. He was the Maple Leaf World Series, you know, like, he brought the energy and the hype and, you know, he, he came out here and, and like even though he wasn't playing, you know, he was competing with us because like he wanted to win just as bad as everybody else. This means a lot, though, that they're dedicating that to him. I mean, he's been gone three years now. So I said this has been a really big year for Doug, even though he's missed out all, all of it. He's had a really big year this year. So it's nice that he's still being remembered. Reporting for Globe Sports, I'm Alyssa McDonald. Fall ball is in the books for now, but the baseball season is quick, coming up quicker than you may think, with the team typically starting out their season down south in early February. You can keep an eye on that schedule online at goleafs.net, and we'll, of course, provide more updates as the spring season approaches. In the meantime, it's time to call a timeout as we shift our focus back over to the cross-country team. The incredible work that they've done this season and their legitimate Crossroads League title hopes right around the corner. Goshen students enjoy an amazing record of success. What's the secret? It starts with hands-on learning experiences. Whether it's a service project in Peru, a sustainability semester at our environmental learning center, 
or broadcasting for our award-winning radio station. It adds up to life-changing perspectives and real-world skill development that makes a difference to future employers. And it's all available at a campus that makes everyone feel at home. Come hang out with us and see for yourself. Schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Inside the Globe Studios in Goshen, this is the Globe Sports Corner. My name is Dante Stanton, and I'm joined now by our guest, Russell Nice, head coach of the Goshen College Cross Country Team. Coach, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. It's great to have you here in the studios. I want to talk a little bit about this team and the mm -hmm. great success that they had this past Saturday, both the men's and the women's teams, finishing inside the top five. What was the mindset uh, going into that meet as opposed to, uh, you know, when you exit and, it, and suddenly you're one of the top five teams? Mm -hmm. um, the mindset was calm. I felt like the last race that we had a bigger one that I got them too amped up, I guess, and, and too stressed out, really. And so then instead of portraying my stress on them, I just kind of relaxed a little bit um, externally. Internally, I wasn't relaxed, but just kind of let them do what they know what to do. Um, so it was a calm mindset, and I told them to keep a calm mindset throughout the race. Give me a little bit of a, a breakdown and a feeling of how you felt as a coach, um, as, as a coach and as a mentor mm -hmm. following those top five finishes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, a, it's two races. Like, the guys did what they were supposed to do, and I felt pretty good about what they did, and they looked good while they were, were competing. And I wasn't surprised by their result. It was about what we were supposed to do. I wasn't sure if we'd break the team time record or not, and that was kind of a nice bonus, but really we were just looking for the place. And then on the women's side, it was like elation and relief, two, two in, in one. And I, I just remember looking at the results, and it said second, and I was like, I can't believe it. So I refreshed them, and it kept saying second. <laughs> and it was something that they had worked on for years and gotten to that point where um, – it's always been there, but it just was nice to have it come out on that day at that time. It was, it was just like, it was relief, it was elation, it was really a lot of excitement for them and myself. So it was good. So not only did you finish extremely well, but you, mm -hmm. you touched on a little bit, you broke the record as mm -hmm. well, the team record. At mm -hmm. what point during the meet did you realize, hey, maybe this is a possibility for both squads? I didn't think about it during the race at all. We were in good positions, and because it was so cold and rainy and muddy outside, I wasn't thinking about time at all. Um, so I didn't think about it. I didn't, I didn't realize they did it until after the race was over, and that was another cool bonus, right? But they, where they were positionally was what I was looking for. I didn't really care about the time. You've kind of had this uh, a little bit of a great habit of breaking records over the past couple of years. It seems like mm -hmm. every couple of weeks another one kind of comes down, whether it's an individual record or a team record. Uh, is that the kind of um, mindset or factors that you, you want to push as a head coach? Do you, do you always want to be pushing for breaking records, or is it pushing for personal best? Um, I, I don't want to push to break records necessarily because then it kind of focuses on the record itself instead of kind of the process along that. Um, and so I don't, I don't focus on the records. I like to break them, and we celebrate when we do break them. Um, but the process to get there is what we really kind of focus on, and the records are a product of that. Um, so hopefully we keep setting them and breaking them, but that's really not what we're working for. It's just um, working together, working for like team goals and things. And um, I mean, the records come with it, but if they didn't and we still play second and fifth it would or fourth it would be the same result whether we were fast or not now the next step of course is the crossroads league championships week mm -hmm. from this saturday um what's the preparation like for the crossroads league championship you got a little bit of a break in between mm -hmm. what's the preparation like as opposed to any other meet can you treat it like any other meet knowing that there's a little bit higher stakes than normal yeah, we can treat it like any other meet. We will. I mean, both teams are really good, and so we don't really need to do anything different than what we've been doing, and that's what we have done in practice is we just kind of stay, this is pun intended, we stay the course with it, right? Um, so we've had training that we've worked to integrate from May and June, and we're not going to switch at the end because that doesn't make a lot of sense. We actually like went pretty hard at it yesterday, so they're pretty tired right now. But we've got, we've got time to adjust a little bit and make sure that we're focusing on recovery for the next week and a half before we go into the meet. Um, but we're not really um, changing a whole lot of what we've planned on doing um, because it's worked, so don't change it. Right. Well, because it's worked so far, what's the confidence level like? I mean, are, is everybody very confident going into the to Crossroads League Championships that not mm -hmm. only they're going to be putting up a good placing, but they're going to be doing the best that they can? I hope so. I'm confident in them, so I, I feel like 
there's not a reason to not be confident. Um, they've, they've shown over and over again that they're really capable of doing what we've wanted to do all season. And so this race is just kind of like the next step in getting to the national championships is what we've wanted to do. But we should feel confident going into it. I feel like 100% confident in what we can do going into it. So I'm not really worried about it. It'll just be fun to be a fan. Now, of course, you can't look too far ahead, but of course, mm -hmm. after the Crossroads League Championships, you have to keep nationals on the mind and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you put into uh, you know, overall top 25 rankings and things like that as far as where the team is positioned? You know, the men being at 13, the women being inside the top 25. How mm -hmm. much do you put into that as a coach with nationals right around the corner? Mm -hmm. um, a little bit, but not a lot. It's, I mean, it's affirming, but the only way to get to nationals is to win the conference championship and then you can get an at-large bid. So we need to focus on performing well at the conference championship, and then what we have done over the course of the season, the body of work, should leave us ranked well enough in the top 25 that we'll get one of those at-large berths. But the ranking, whether we're eight or nine, or whether we're one, or whether we're 25, or whether we're not ranked going into conference, it doesn't matter, um, because we start at the same day on the same line. So there's not really much that matters with rankings um, until after the race is over, and then it matters to get us into nationals. But not kind a lot. of a, a little bit of a plain and simple question to wrap things up: What do you expect out of this team, and what could people expect out of this team, both of them, as we go into the Crossroads League Championships? We can expect their best. They'll give their best, and whether that's a great race for them or not a great race or something in the middle, um, but we can expect their best. They'll be prepared. Um, I'll do my best to be prepared, but they'll we can expect their best. All right, Coach. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you joining us here in the studios today. Of course, Crossroads League Championships a week from this Saturday, if, if I'm correct. Friday. Friday, a week from yeah. Friday. So right around the corner. Very exciting stuff. Good luck. Thank you. After a short break, seniors across multiple sports are playing in their final collegiate games and receiving their due honors in front of the home crowd. Stay with us. This is the Globe Sports Corner. Goshen College. Everyone's at home here. Students from around the world and down the street find inspiration and lifelong friends in our unique, supportive community, right here in northern Indiana. Cutting-edge academics, real-world learning, and small, personalized classes make the difference, all surrounded by world-class culture and championship sports. Most importantly, it all leads to a record of amazing outcomes in diverse fields of study. From pre-med to social work, broadcasting to accounting, schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu visit. Thanks for joining us on the Globe Sports Corner. While the weather may not be the best indicator, the fall athletic season is wrapping up soon, which means for many seniors, their playing career is wrapping up as well. Six seniors on the women's soccer side, that's Lexi Adamchak, Natalie Clark, Clara Ebert, Lauren Murphy, Emma Thomas, and Emma Zare were all honored on Saturday ahead of their matchup with the Bethel Pilots. Each received their own senior plaque and were giving standing ovations for their years of dedication to GC Athletics. Women's Volleyball also had a special night for the trio of seniors, Brielle Agnew, Gwen Bellamy, and the club's own Christina Town. On top of their plaques, each senior also received a specialized pullover that featured their jersey number. We at Globe Sports to thank all the seniors for their hard work, trust, and value in their respective programs. We still have more athletes in honor, though, but this time we turn to the junior class with Mercy Chabay of the women's cross-country team, as she's been named the Everett Student Athlete of the Week. Of 189 runners at the Great Lakes Challenge, Chabay finished eighth, the highest-placing individual for Goshen, as they raced past the competition to a second-place team ranking. Congratulations, Mercy, and of course, good luck in the coming weeks with the Crossroads League Championships. We've got a short break coming up, but when we return, it's time to head to the soccer pitch for our Globe Highlight of the Week and the Maple Leaf Minute. That's all coming up. Stay with us. So you just graduated from Ocean College. What experiences prepared you for this job? Where do I begin?
of the first half. Let's see if she scores this one. She might be player. Oh, my goodness! What a goal! Aguilera! Incredible highlight there on the women's soccer side. Colin Eccles and Cormac Kublichty on the call. Well, we've taken a look at the past. Now it's time to look at the future with our Maple Leaf Minute and my co-host, Seth Smith-Goffman. Seth. Yeah, thanks, Dante. Fall sports may be wrapping up in the next couple weeks, but don't worry because we have the start of men's and women's basketball to look forward to. Both teams will tip off for the first time this weekend, but let me slow my roll. We'll get to that in a moment. Tonight is busy, busy, busy with women's soccer taking on Grace College on the road. Start time is 7 p.m. The women's volleyball game at Ruth Gundon Gymnasium has been moved up to 6 p.m. They face the 16 and 11 Spring Arbor Wildcats. With the volleyball game start being changed, you have plenty of time to walk over to the John Ingold Athletic Complex after the match where you can catch men's soccer action against the Grace College Lancer. Start time, 8 p.m. Catch live coverage by Dante Stan and myself by visiting goleafs.net slash live. It's that time of year to hit the hardwood men's basketball. Head to the Lancer Tip-Off Classic this Friday, where they will take on Madonna University at 6 p.m. At the same time, the women's basketball team will start off their season at the Cougar Classic in Fort Wayne. They will face off against Concordia University. Finally, on Saturday, both basketball teams will play a second game at their respective tournaments. Women's basketball will play at 10 a.m., competing with Cornerstone University. The men play at noon, taking on Kentucky Christian University. As well, some U.S. Highway 20 Cup action at 3 p.m. on Saturday with women's volleyball taking on the Pilots. Men's and women's soccer also come back for a second set of games this weekend. The men will be at home starting at 7, competing with Taylor University. Coverage by Kate Boddicker and Ella Kaufman-Smith can be found anywhere that you tune into the Globe. And finally, the women's team also takes on Taylor, but on the road, start time is the same, 7 o'clock. That wraps up your Maple Leaf Minute. Go Leafs! Thanks to Seth for that report. As always, you can follow along with 91.1 The Globe on our various social media platforms. That's Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly Twitter, and our YouTube channel, as well as our website, globeradio.org. Keep an eye out on the platforms for more Globe TV content, including the next episode of The Globe News Report, set to release this Friday. That's going to do it for this episode of The Globe Sports Corner. Tune in every two weeks for more exclusive coverage of Maple Leaf Athletics. For the entire sports crew, for Seth Ms. Kaufman, I'm Dante Stanton. Thanks for watching.